Some hard problems in programming include answering queries on trees. While some can be proved first, when you require an optimal solution, free decompositions are the way to solve these kinds of problems. Now, there are different kinds of decompositions. Central decomposition is a type of decomposition which uses divide and conquer technique to answer queries on trees. As a prerequisite, you must know basic graph theory and doing a depth first search. Let's start with some definitions, shall we? Firstly, what is the centroid of a tree? It's a node in a tree, removing which will divide the tree into forests, each having number of nodes equal to at most the half of the number of nodes in the original tree. Please do not confuse it with the center of the tree. Now, the question is, how do we find the centroid of a tree efficiently? It's pretty straightforward. Pause the video for a moment and think to yourself. Done? Now let's take a look at the solution. We can just pick an arbitrary route to start with and notice the number of nodes each of the forests will have after deleting it. And that's obviously the size of the subtree. Let n be the size of the current tree. If all the subtrees have sizes less than n by 2, we have our centroid and that's the arbitrary route we just picked. But if one subtree has size greater than n by 2, we know that the centroid is in that subtree. If you think about it, it's quite intuitive. And we also know that there cannot be more than one subtree with size greater than n by 2 because if one subtree has greater than n by 2 nodes, we have less than n by 2 nodes left for the other subtrees. Now how do we implement this concept? It will take two DFS to find the centroid. First one, to store the size of the subtrees rooted at each of the nodes in the tree. This will take O of n time. The second one to actually find the centroid. This will take O of log n time because at most we need to traverse the path in a tree. And the longest possible path visits log n nodes at most. Now how do we form the centroid tree? Let's understand this with the help of an example. We will be building the centroid tree step by step. First, we search for the centroid of the tree we are currently working with and then add it to the centroid tree removing it from the original tree. On removing the centroid, the original given tree decomposes into a number of different trees each having size less than n by 2. We make the centroid the root of the current tree and then recursively decompose each of the new trees form and attach the centroid as children to our root. Thus, a new centroid tree is formed from the original tree. Take a look at this animation to get a better understanding. Now let's take a look at some of the properties of the centroid tree we formed. Firstly, the tree contains all the n nodes of the original tree as each node will become the centroid of a smaller tree which may be a tree consisting only of that single node. Secondly, the height of the centroid tree is at most log n as at each step, the new trees formed by removing the centroid have size at most n by 2, the maximum number of levels would be log n. Lastly, the most important property that we will use to answer the queries is that considering any two arbitrary vertices A and B and the path between them in the original tree, it can be broken down into A to C and C to B where C is the lowest common ancestor of A and B in the centroid tree. It's actually not hard to see that given any arbitrary vertices A and B and their lowest common ancestor C in the centroid tree. Both A and B lie inside the part of which vertex C was the centroid of and they both were first separated into different parts when vertex C was removed. So, we decompose the given tree into n log n different parts from each centroid to all the vertices in the corresponding part such that any path is a concatenation of two different parts from this set. Using some data structure like an array, we can maintain the required information that we need to answer these queries about this n log n different path chosen so that any other path can be decomposed into two different paths from this set and these two paths can be found in order of log n time by finding the lowest common ancestor of the centroid tree since the height of the centroid tree is at most log n.